Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I continue my favorite subject, problems, um, related to similarity in this case. This is lecture number five with different problems. Um, uh, you definitely have to try to solve all these problems by yourself first before listening to this lecture. So I hope everything is done. Whatever you have been able to solve, great. If you didn't solve some problem, it's okay too. I will do right now all these problems um, in front of you. Uh, and when I finish, it's very important to basically um, repeat just by yourself uh, all these proofs which uh, Jack have presented. Uh, and that would be the great way to kind of put your logic in place so it will be useful for some other purposes. All right, so what kind of problems are we facing right now? Given a circle with a diameter AB and chord PQ perpendicular to diameter. So there is a circle. This is diameter AB, which goes through the center, and chord PQ perpendicular to it, intersecting at point X. Prove the following equality between the lengths of corresponding segments. 4 times AX times XB is equal to PQ squared. Okay. How can I prove that? Well, um, you remember that angle supported by a diameter is the right angle, right? It's basically half of uh, the angle which is 100 of each degree, which means it's 90. Now, also, since I said this is perpendicular, this is also uh, the right angle. Now, let's consider two triangles, um, APX and BPX. Now, obviously, these two angles are congruent to each other, because this is perpendicular to this, and this is perpendicular to that, which means that these two triangles are similar. Now, from similarity of these triangles, we conclude that um, the catheters, which is against this angle in a bigger triangle, which is PX, relates to the catheters, which is against, which is opposite to the same angle in a small triangle, which is XB. as they are related as the other pair of catheters, uh, which are lying opposite to other two angles, which is AX to, and in the small one, it would be PX. Now, from which we conclude that AX times xb is equal to px squared. Now, px is one half of pq because, as you know, uh, the radius perpendicular to a chord divides it in half. Again, that was one of the problems which we were solving before, many theorems or whatever it is. So px is actually one half of pq squared which is equal to one-fourth of pq squared. From which this 4 goes here, and you have that pq squared is equal to 4 times ax times what's supposed to be proved. OK, that's simple. Now, notice that in this and uh, in all other problems related to similarity, 
All I have to do is to find or construct some, a couple of triangles, usually the right triangles, where some angle is common or uh, congruent, and which means they are similar, and then just use the proportionality of the sides. Basically, this is a typical example. Just find something which is similar and use the proportionality. Now, let's go next. Given a circle with diameter AB, starts the same way, and chord intersecting this diameter, PQ intersecting at point X. Prove the following equality between the lengths of the corresponding segments. AX times XB equals PX by XQ. So AX times XB equal to PX times XQ. Now, now I'm not saying that the chord is perpendicular. In this case, it's different, and that's why these two segments have different lengths, because if it was perpendicular, the, uh, the chord would be divided in half by the diameter. Now it's not. However, this particular equality still holds. Now, how can we, um, how can we prove this particular thing? Well, let's just connect these two things. Now, what do we see right now? You know that uh, inscribed angle is measured, uh, inscribed into a circle, I mean, is measured as half of the central angle, which is supported by the same uh, arc. So, angle ABP is measured as half of the central angle supported by this arc. And so is angle AQP. So they are congruent to each other because they are supported by the same arc. Similarly, these two angles are congruent because they are both supported by this arc, BQ. Now, obviously, we have two different triangles with two uh, correspondingly congruent angles, which means they are similar. So again, we found the similarity. And now I just use this similarity to prove this particular equation, because this is definitely just a proportion. So the side in the bigger triangle across the, this angle is AX. The side in a smaller triangle, support, uh, which is uh, opposite to the same angle, is XP equals. Now let's take another pair of angles, this and this. In this triangle, opposite to this angle is XQ. And in this triangle, opposite to this same angle is XB. So x, AX times XB, AX times XB equals to uh, PX, XP, PX, same thing, times XQ. Simple. All we did just found the similar similarity between certain triangles. Well, actually, I can't say that it was um, absolutely trivial. Because, you see, if you have a diameter and a chord, um, you don't have triangles, right? So I have to draw a couple of lines to, uh, from the ends of diameter to ends of chord um, to basically construct a couple of triangles, and then I prove them to be um, uh, congruent. Sorry, similar. similar. So just some small, very, very small, and kind of intuitively obvious uh, additional construction 
I had to make before going into the conclusions. Okay, next. Given a circle and point X inside it, let AB be any chord that contains this point. Prove that the product of lengths of segments AX, AX, and XB is independent of the position of the chord AB, as long as it contains the point X. So, we have to prove that AX times XB is constant, regardless of position of the chord. This way, or this way, or this way. So, AX times XB is the same as A prime X times XB prime, same as uh, x double prime x to x b double prime etc. Now um, this is something which is an immediate uh, consequence from the previous theorem because if I will draw a diameter through point x and call it I don't know, mn whatever then we know from the previous theorem that the multiplication of the length of this times length of this is equal to the result of the multiplication of this times this. That was a previous theorem. And again, it doesn't really depend on whether it's this chord or this chord or that chord. In any case, this is all equal to mx times xn, where mn is a diameter which is um, going through this point x. That's why this is a constant regardless of the position of the chord as long as the point x through which the chord actually goes is fixed inside the circle. Direct consequence from the previous theorem. Actually, it doesn't really deserve to be a separate problem uh, I would say it's just a continuation of the previous problem. Okay, what's next? Given a circle and point outside it, let XM be a tangent. Tangent, as you know, is always perpendicular to the radius To a point of tangency. Okay. M. All right. Consider any line that contains point X and intersects a circle at two points A and B. A and B. Prove that the product of lengths of segments XA and XB xa times xb is equal to a square of a distance from x to m. Okay. For obvious reason, we have to find, again, uh, similar triangles. And again, something which is intuitively obvious, we have to connect this to this and this to this. Um, so, I wonder if it is uh, obvious that triangles XBM and XAM are similar to each other. Well, maybe it's not so obvious, but anyway, they do have uh, the common angle, right? This one. Now, how about the other length, uh, another angle? Um, we have to prove that this angle is 
congruent to this one. Well, number one, there was a theorem, which I have already proven before, that if you have a circle tangent and a chord, oh, let me draw it more or less the same way here, tangent and a chord, then this angle is measured as half of a central angle supported by the same chord. Now, I'm just referring you to this theorem, and um, now using this theorem, I can say that, okay, since this angle is equal to half of the central angle supported by this particular chord, and this is also, this is an inscribed angle, which is also equal to a central angle, half of the central angle supported by the same chord. That's why these two angles um, are congruent. I do refer you to this particular theorem. Um, that was in a lecture when I was talking about inscribed angles and angles uh, formed by chord and, and the tangent. Um, it's all in that lecture. Uh, if, if you don't remember exactly how to prove it, I would suggest you to try to prove it yourself first. And then if you can't, go to the lecture, listen to the lecture again. It's very important for you to be able to prove it basically at will, so to speak, based on whatever the experience you have already accumulated in proving different theorems. So I'm using this particular theorem. So this angle is equal to half of this uh, arc, or half of the central angle associated with arc, as well as this angle. So they are equal to each other which means that the triangles are similar. And from similarity of the triangles, I'm sure we can get this one. All right. In a small triangle, let's go small to the big one. In a small triangle, uh, let's take um, the side which is opposite to this double arced angle, which is XB. Now, in a bigger triangle, the side opposite to the same angle is in XMA, it's XM. Now, in a small triangle, XBM, the uh, side which is opposite to the third angle, not this, not that, but the third angle, this one, which is the same as this one, obviously, is XM. And in a bigger triangle, the side which is opposite to angle XMA is XA. Oops, XA. From which we have XB times XA, XA times XB is equal to XM squared. So all we have to do is to connect uh, these two, line, uh, two, two points, and again, prove the similarity of the triangles, which is, well, it's intuitively obvious, uh, but obviously we have to prove it. And the way to prove it is one angle is common, and another angle, pair of angles, are congruent to each other because of certain theorem which we have already proven before. Okay. Next, given a circle and point X outside it, consider any line that contains point X and intersects a circle in points A and B. Prove that the product of lengths of segment XA times XB is constant. 
as long as, I mean, constant regardless of the direction of this line, as long as it uh, goes through x and intersects our circle in two points. Well, again, this is actually uh, a direct consequence from the previous theorem, because if I will draw a, a tangent, the product xa times xd would be a square of a distance from x to the point of tangency. So regardless of direction of the xa, whether it's this way or this way, or this way, the product of bigger times smaller lengths of these segments is always equal to square of uh, the segment within the tangent. And that's why it's constant. And by the way, if I will take another tangent, these two distances from xm to xn are equal to each other. And that was, again, a different theorem, which we have proven when we were talking about circles and, uh, and tangents, etc. That's why it doesn't really matter which tangent I will take, one or another. This is always square of that piece of tangent. Well, that's it for today. And I do recommend you to go through all these problems again. Go to the website, unizor.com. Go to these problems. Try to prove all these uh, equations yourself. And if you're comfortable, great. If not, try to listen to lecture again. Uh, website is open for all. Uh, teachers and parents can use it for uh, homeschooling or group studying and whatever else. Um, that's it. Thanks very much.